Welcome to the Story World Channel. Enjoy your viewing experience. Norman's quest for the elusive address became an odyssey that stretched across the sands of time. An hour, an eternity, slipped through his grasp as he wandered amidst a labyrinthine constellation of identical high-rise monoliths, their towering forms locked in a paradoxical dance of repetition. It was as though a cosmic architect had crafted them in a wickedly playful loop, each turn leading Norman back to the starting point. But as fate weaved its enigmatic tapestry, a beacon of hope pierced through the veil of frustration. A building, seemingly indistinguishable yet divinely unique, revealed itself to Norman's searching eyes. A miracle had materialized, guiding him to his clientele's haven. Swift as a phoenix taking flight, Norman settled into his role, configuring the intricate gears of a nascent gaming laptop. Yet, as the final keystroke resounded, Norman's purpose shifted once more. A newfound urgency propelled him from the apartment's embrace, spurring his descent to the ground floor. The epiphany struck like lightning, a lingering afterthought. The sixth building, shrouded in mystery, awaited its rendezvous with Norman's expertise. Regret nipped at his heels, a missed query that echoed in the halls of hindsight. With determination as his compass, Norman ventured forth, his steps guided by an invisible thread woven from serendipity's fabric. A plaintive meow, a feline plea for aid, echoed through the narrow alley's gloom. Norman's path unfurled like an ancient scroll, leading him to a threshold of shadows where sunlight tiptoed hesitantly. Here, in the embrace of obscurity, a tableau unfolded before Norman's eyes. A damsel in distress, a girl of 16 summers, wrestled with a stubborn feline captive, a kitten ensnared upon a pipe, its paws dancing with a fiery symphony upon scalding metal. The girl's voice cut through the air like frost, a chilling request for assistance that carried the weight of desperation. Norman, a savior unburdened by physics, leaped into action. Muscles coiled like springs, he defied gravity's confines, seizing the kitten's paw in a daring bid to bridge the gap between peril and salvation. As the kitten found its way back to solid ground, Norman's gaze met the girl's, locking in a momentary connection. The girl, now a conjurer of comfort, soothed the ruffled feathers of her feline companion with whispered incantations, her touch a balm for a wounded spirit. An unspoken understanding lingered in the air, a shared sentiment that transcended words. Shall we depart from this chiaroscura realm? Norman's words hung in the air, a proposition punctuated by the kitten's mended purr. The skies are awash with a somber palette. Surely brighter horizons beckon. A chuckle danced upon the girl's lips, a flicker of light in the obsidian expanse. Perhaps, she mused, but my dwelling resides within these very shadows a hidden alcove that cradles my existence. Curiosity kindled within Norman's gaze, a fire that sought to illuminate the girl's narrative. An exchange of words ensued, fragments of her story scattering like stardust upon the canvas of their conversation. Vanessa, a nomad within these darkened corridors, had etched six moons worth of memories upon their walls. In the wake of their encounter, as the alley's secrets whispered in hushed tones, Norman's footsteps carried him forward. A symbiotic journey had unfurled, a tapestry woven with threads of unforeseen connection, enigma, and a glimmer of shared humanity. Norman's temper flared as a surge of anger enveloped him, leaving him in a state of turmoil. His thoughts swirled in a chaotic dance, a perplexing maze that clouded his ability to formulate a coherent response. Amid this internal tumult, he made a deliberate choice to veer the conversation onto a different path. With an air of curiosity, he inquired whether she held knowledge of the whereabouts of building number six, a subject far removed from the current discourse. As the dialogue unfolded, a twist of fate revealed Vanessa's intimate familiarity with the very location in question. Her history was interwoven with the very bricks and mortar of that place as she had once called it home. Eagerly, she accepted Norman's unspoken invitation, 
agreeing to join him on a journey to that familiar abode. Upon arrival, Norman's quest began, leading him to the door of the elusive apartment. Inside, the hum of technology filled the air as he meticulously configured a computer to his specifications. Yet, a different curiosity tugged at his thoughts, a peculiar girl dwelling in the shadowy alley behind the adjacent block. It was a mystery that beckoned for unraveling. Might you be familiar with the enigmatic girl who resides in the alley? Norman's inquiry hung in the air, to which Vanessa's response carried the weight of recognition. You speak of Vanessa, she acknowledged, her tone laced with a touch of empathy. Indeed, a young soul burdened by the trials of life, a collective effort within our community to extend a helping hand. Vanessa's recollections flowed forth, painting a poignant narrative of her past. A thread of stability had once existed, woven by the presence of family. Yet life's capricious nature tore through that fabric, claiming loved ones one by one. The loss of her grandfather marked the initial tremor, followed by the sudden departure of her father in a tragic car accident. Left with only her mother as a pillar of support, they navigated the storm that ensued. Her mother's demeanor shifted, transforming into a fragile shell of her former self, a transformation that cast a shadow over their lives. In this newfound vulnerability, the contours of their shared humanity emerged. Norman, driven by an innate sense of compassion, reached out to Vanessa, a small beacon of kindness in her world of turmoil. A bond forged amidst adversity, solidified over time, as their shared experiences wove the threads of their lives into an intricate tapestry of understanding. As the hours ebbed away, a sense of comfort settled upon them. Vanessa, rosy-cheeked from a refreshing bath, found solace in Norman's hospitality. Clad in his bathrobe, she savored each bite of the meal set before her, a manifestation of his care and consideration. Nearby, a feline companion mirrored her contentment, indulging in its own culinary delights. Over cups of steaming tea, the two souls connected through shared stories. Vanessa's voice carried the weight of a life lived, a journey through trials and tribulations. A once complete family unit fractured by fate, leaving her to navigate the intricate labyrinth of existence with her mother by her side. The contours of resilience emerged, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure, to find solace in the face of adversity. In this exchange of narratives, a kinship blossomed, transcending the boundaries of past and present. Norman's initial gesture of benevolence had unfurled into a profound connection, a reminder that even amidst life's most trying moments, a beacon of compassion could illuminate the path ahead. In my earnest attempt to engage with her, a deep sense of empathy welled up within me. Yet, it was as if my words dissolved into thin air, unheard by her distant gaze. The passing days saw my mother's absences from our home grow more frequent, elongating into extended stretches. Initially, I attributed her prolonged departures to the demands of her work. However, a startling revelation awaited me when I sought her out one fateful day. The truth was unveiled before me. She hadn't held a job in months. As the weight of reality set in, my financial resources dwindled, leaving me bereft even of the simplest sustenance like a loaf of bread. A lifeline emerged in the form of a phone call from my mother, a voice that offered an explanation, but also a disheartening resolution. She had found solace in a haven where understanding and affection flowed freely, a place of resplendent beauty. It was a sentiment that left me with a mingling of confusion and sadness. The subsequent arrival of strangers, brandishing documents bearing my mother's signature, shattered the familiarity of our dwelling. Their proclamation was clear, our once shared abode now belonged to them. Gossip whispered among the neighbors painted a darker picture, hinting at my mother's entanglement with dubious forces. Gradually, my convictions aligned with the growing suspicion my mother had fallen into the clutches of a sinister organization. With no place to truly call home, I found refuge in the kindness of a neighbor. 
Despite their own bustling household, they offered me shelter. However, a desire to not impose on their goodwill compelled me to seek an alternative. It was then that the janitor, moved by compassion, extended a gesture of empathy. The keys to a compact utility room, housing his cleaning equipment, became my newfound sanctuary. Within those modest walls, I settled my textbooks and belongings, carving out a semblance of stability amidst the uncertainty. Norman's intervention in my narrative introduced a glimmer of hope. His unwavering support manifested in a comfortable sleeping arrangement, with a meticulously crafted bed in his room. Meanwhile, he resigned himself to the living room, his restless thoughts consumed by my plight. Sleep remained elusive for him, as the weight of my story lingered, allowing him solace only as the dawn approached. As day transitioned to evening, the return of Norman's parents marked a shifting tide. Their perplexed expressions mirrored the surprise that engulfed them upon discovering their son asleep in the living room. Yet, their astonishment deepened when an unfamiliar figure emerged from his room. The boundaries of their expectations had been surpassed, and they stood momentarily suspended in disbelief. The subsequent scene unfolded in the heart of the family's abode, the kitchen. Conversations tinged with discomfort ensued as the clash of perspectives reverberated. The noble intentions that had guided Norman's actions stood at odds with the sentiments of his parents. Their demands were unequivocal. Vanessa's presence was to be swiftly eradicated from their household. Within the confines of my makeshift quarters, I overheard the tumultuous exchange, each word a stark reminder of my tenuous position. The weight of my perceived burdens pressed heavily upon me. Clad in attire that symbolized my readiness to depart, I stood in the company of a feline companion. Norman's actions had sparked a glimmer of respite, a brief interlude of solace, yet the inevitable truth lingered. My place was not here. With a heavy heart and gratitude etched in my gaze, I turned to Norman, my voice a mere whisper. I have listened, I understand. I must leave. This is not where I belong. A sense of appreciation for the kindness bestowed upon me was woven into those fleeting words a testament to the connection that had briefly illuminated the shadowed corners of my existence. All right, let's proceed, he responded, a sense of determination etched across his features. With purposeful strides, he retrieved an item from the table and advanced toward the door. But you can't simply return to the streets, the concern in her voice resonated. As the front door reverberated with a resounding thud, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers emerged from the confines of the kitchen, their expressions a mix of curiosity and bewilderment, finding an unoccupied house. In swift motion, Norman embarked on a quest to secure a haven for Vanessa. Responding to an advertisement, he uncovered a cozy haven for her, skillfully navigating the role of her brother in the presence of the landlady. Financial considerations were swiftly settled, as he prepaid several months' worth of rent and procured the essentials, sustenance, medication, and the tools of daily living. Vanessa stood in stunned disbelief, gratitude warring with her instinct to decline such immense generosity. Yet Norman's resolve remained steadfast, an unwavering commitment to reshaping her circumstances. Nightfall saw Norman's return to the familial abode, his reception marked by a subdued welcome from his parents. The consequences of his actions weighed heavily upon their hearts, leading them to ponder the best course of action. A unanimous verdict emerged, a swift marriage, a union that would ostensibly redirect Norman's path away from these unanticipated benevolent endeavors. The discussion unfolded with a mix of disappointment and concern. Norman, your future holds so much promise, your business ventures are flourishing. Yet you engage in impulsive actions, his mother lamented. The specter of Kelly's presence loomed, her suitability proffered as a counterpoint to Vanessa's circumstances. What if Kelly, have you reconsidered marrying her? Norman's response was weary, his words tinged with fatigue. In truth, I never harbored intentions of marrying her. That was a fabrication born of conjecture, he confessed 
His voice weighted with the weight of honesty. Undeterred by his explanation, his parents persisted in their discourse. Kelly's virtues were extolled, her family deemed suitable companions for their son. In the face of their relentless discourse, Norman's patience waned. Departing the gathering, he sought refuge in the solitude of his room, his thoughts drifting to Vanessa. Over the course of the ensuing month, a seemingly innocuous event, Mrs. Rogers' birthday celebration, served as a backdrop for a more intricate agenda. Kelly and her parents were invited, the veneer of celebration then veiling a subtler intent. Conversations danced around future plans, projections of compatibility interwoven with the festive air. Norman, however, remained unswayed, a resolute figure standing amidst the orchestrated commotion. The finality of their exchange, as Kelly discreetly requested to escort Vanessa home, was met with a simple farewell at her apartment's threshold. An unspoken acknowledgement passed between them, a mutual understanding that their paths were now divergent. Norman's thoughts remained tethered to Vanessa, their connection unbroken despite the external machinations. Frequent visits allowed a glimpse into her evolving journey, a newfound pursuit of massage therapy, her elation palpable as she recounted the milestones of her learning. In a twist of fate, Vanessa's burgeoning skills found a receptive canvas in the form of her landlady. As her hands worked their magic, years of back ailments were gently alleviated, and the bond between them deepened. Within the confines of these shared moments, the tapestry of Vanessa's life found vibrant hues, woven together by the threads of compassion, resilience, and the unyielding pursuit of a better tomorrow. Within this shared journey, the landlady assumed the role of mentor, imparting the art of efficient household management to Vanessa. In a reciprocal exchange, Vanessa's burgeoning massage skills blossomed into a bridge that connected her with the landlady's friends, providing both solace and rejuvenation. As time flowed like a river, life took on a new rhythm. It was on a tranquil evening that Kelly sought Norman's assistance with her laptop. His arrival was met with an unexpected tableau. Kelly greeted him, a vision of delicate allier draped in a diaphanous negligee. A delicate dance of emotions ensued as she drew closer, her confession of affection flowing forth with an air of vulnerability. Norman, why do you keep evading me? My heart has been entwined with yours for a considerable time. We're adults, yet you navigate our connection like a hesitant youth, Kelly implored, her grip on him tightening. Gently disentangling himself, Norman looked into her eyes. Kelly, you're truly wonderful, but my heart belongs to another woman. We are on the cusp of marriage, he shared, honesty shaping each word. A surge of disbelief rippled through Kelly, her voice rising in a plea. Who is it? Who has captured your heart? It's Vanessa, the girl I told you about, the one I care for deeply. Kelly's frustration boiled over, her tone shifting from supplication to defiance. This cannot be, Norman. You're simply clouded by pity for her, and you and I are meant to be together. Understand, your parents will never approve of someone like her. Their exchange hung in the air, a contentious blend of emotions. Before Kelly could further articulate her perspective, Norman made a swift exit from her apartment propelled by a sense of urgency. His feet propelled him down the stairs, driven by an unshakable determination to reach Vanessa. Bursting through the door of their haven, he found her within, his arms encircling her in an embrace fueled by relief. Vanessa, my love, he whispered, his voice tinged with vulnerability. I was afraid you would leave. A fragile smile graced her lips. I wanted to, but I couldn't, she replied drawing herself even closer to him. Their connection deepened, an unspoken bond forged through trials and triumphs. I love you so much, he declared, each word imbued with a profound resonance. A month later, the quiet intimacy of their love was sealed in the sanctity of marriage. No grand celebration adorned their union. No grandiose fanfare marked their commitment. The absence of guests, including Norman's parents, underscored the uniqueness of their journey.
Yet, amidst the quietude, a profound contentment prevailed. They had each other. Time flowed onward, carrying with it the evolution of their shared lives. A year's passage saw Vanessa's aspirations materialize as she embarked on a journey towards becoming a chiropractor, each step propelling her closer to her dreams. Simultaneously, Norman's business flourished, mirroring the growth of his partnership with Vanessa. In the realm of Norman's family, a poignant development beckoned. A call from his father heralded a concerning turn of events. His mother's health had deteriorated significantly. Afflicted by the persistent torment of neuralgia and high blood pressure, her condition had left her immobilized, a shadow of her former self. The plea for Norman's presence was unmistakable, and he heeded the call without hesitation. Accompanied by his devoted wife, Vanessa, he entered the familial abode. Within those walls, the threads of history intertwined as the past met the present in a poignant tableau. With his mother's well-being hanging in the balance, Norman stood poised to fulfill his role as both son and husband, a testament to the enduring power of love and compassion. Vanessa, brimming with determination and empathy, approached her mother-in-law, Mrs. Rogers. Please, don't be angry with me. I genuinely love your son, she implored, her voice infused with sincerity. Allow me to offer you a massage. I have the skills, and I would be honored to provide you with comfort and relief. Mrs. Rogers, her countenance a reflection of skepticism, responded with a grumble. Massage? I've only known one true master in my life. Nasser, a man with truly golden hands. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, and no one has come close to his expertise since. You probably haven't even heard of him. Unfazed by the challenge, Vanessa met Mrs. Rogers' gaze with calm assurance. Actually, I am familiar with Nasser. He was my grandfather, she revealed, her words punctuated by a sense of quiet pride. I learned extensively from him, and my father, who was a physician, also shared his knowledge. My mother, too, was involved in the medical field, having worked in a pharmacy. Stunned by this revelation, Mrs. Rogers stared at Vanessa in disbelief. The air seemed to shift as the weight of the truth settled in. Vanessa, undeterred by the incredulity in her mother-in-law's eyes, completed her preparations and embarked on the massage. The mids flowed like a gentle stream, the rhythm of Vanessa's skilled hands coaxing relaxation and comfort. As the session drew to a close, a profound silence enveloped them. It was Mrs. Rogers who broke the stillness, her voice laden with humility. I apologize for my misconception. I was mistaken, and for that, I'm sorry. We only wanted our son's happiness. Vanessa's response was measured and compassionate, a testament to her understanding of the complexities that had woven their lives together. I comprehend your perspective. We all wish for Norman's happiness, and I assure you that includes me too. Now, we find ourselves facing new chapters, and perhaps it's a journey we can undertake together. A moment of contemplation hung in the air before Vanessa gently suggested, maybe we can find purpose in each other, a shared reason to move forward. Perhaps it's time to consider new connections and new sources of joy. After all, there's a grandchild on the horizon, someone for whom we can cherish life anew. Mrs. Rogers' eyes softened, the tendrils of hope winding their way through her heart. A smile, delicate yet laden with emotion, graced her lips. Norman doesn't know this yet, but you're the first person I've confided in, Vanessa continued, her voice a warm whisper. Moved by Vanessa's words and the tender compassion that radiated from her, Mrs. Rogers slowly rose from her seat. A remarkable realization dawned upon her, the absence of the once persistent pain that had plagued her. Tears welled in her eyes as gratitude spilled forth. Thank you, dear, she choked out, her voice quivering with emotion. And, Vanessa, your hands truly are golden, a legacy passed down from your grandfather. In the midst of this unexpected connection, a bridge had been built, spanning generations and dissolving misconceptions. 
a bond formed not only through the therapeutic touch of skilled hands, but through the shared understanding of the complexities that shape lives. As the healing power of their newfound connection unfurled, Mrs. Rogers' heart opened to the possibility of embracing a different, more profound kind of happiness.